All right, let's get into this. This is Will with SRT Amplification, and welcome back to part two of our series on this VTVM meter that we have. It is a Heath Kit model IM5228, and today we will be going over how to construct probes for this thing. Now, uh, this meter happens to be rated for 1500 volts peak to peak so uh, correction mr seven it appears we did not interfere rather the enterprise was simply part of what was supposed to happen on this day in 1968 so correction the vacuum tube voltmeter is actually rated for 1500 volts rms not peak to peak so just wanted to make that correction right now it's it's calibrated the scales calibrated in 1500 volts rms but it'll actually act have much more voltage on there peak voltage will be a little over 2000 volts peak so just wanted to make that correction there um i did not know of a phone plug or you know i've got several quarter inch jacks for guitars and stuff like that obviously they're not rated for that high of a voltage and I was going to have to get one of those and come up with some some cable that was uh, rated for that voltage and all that. Um, you know, your normal multimeters, digital multimeters only go up to, most of them only go up to about a thousand volts on the DC side. And maybe, what, 600 volts or so on the AC side or... But anyway, 700, I guess these ones up here I have, they go up to... Uh, a thousand on the DC and they go up to 750 on the AC. So anyway, so anyway, what we're going to do is what I, what I found instead of having to just piecemeal stuff together, I found this guy online. He's on eBay. He's got an eBay store. His name is Kent craft and his eBay store is actually, I'll put a link to it in the description. But his, his uh, eBay name is actually his amateur uh, radio call sign here. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link to this in the description. There's the back of his card. So he's got cap kits for uh, stuff. I mean, he's, he's really into like radio. So we're talking, you know, higher frequency stuff uh, where I'm more into audio, but... But he's got all kinds of uh, probes, probe parts, par kits, wire, stuff like that he sells. I think I got this for 15 bucks. which if I'd have just bought all these parts uh, on their own, it probably would have been more than that. And he shipped it right away. He answered my questions. I had questions about the, let's look at this real quick. I had questions about the insulation um, values on this. And you can see this stuff's rated for... This cable's rated for 5,000 volts. I don't know if you can see that. But, um, yep. Rated for 5,000 volts. And so we're going to put this together. He doesn't put them together for you, so that's probably why the cost is so low. Obviously, if you put these things together, it would be be much more. But I guess he figures if if you are using these, you can probably... Put them together yourself. So let's see what we got here. First of all, we got two probes, a black and a red. Now, normally, you know, in most multimeters, you would use, you know, one as a common, one as whatever you're measuring. But in this case, that's not the way it's going to be. If you remember in our uh, B VTVM, um, you can measure AC and DC. And if you just have one probe, typically you have a switch on the probe. And the DC would switch in a one meg resistor and the switch would take out the one meg resistor for AC. And you would just use one probe and a ground clip. Well, in this particular application, the way we're going to do this is one of these is going to be the DC plug and one of them is going to be the AC, AC probe, DC probe. And then we'll have a separate ground clip that's included here. And it'll all run into this quarter inch telephone plug right here. So let's see what we got in this little bag right here. So he answered all my questions. Um, um, he, you know, he he said that these. My main concern was 
for this telephone plug, really. He said that they've been uh, tested at 2,000 volts, so they're good. And it's got some strain relief on there, so that's good. Awesome. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is what you're going to have to watch out for on these because, you know, some people throw this away, right? Yeah, who needs it? And audio, uh, you may not need it. I mean, you got a low voltage on there. And this, you're going to want that on there. So not only are we going to heat shrink after we uh, solder our wires right here, we're going to heat shrink, shrink around them. But we want to make sure we get that back on there because you can see when this is screwed on there, how close that center tip connection right there is to the outside. Very, very close. So we're definitely going to want some uh, insulation between that. So make sure that sleeve gets put back on there. So we got the we got the foam plug. We got the two probes. Okay. We got the cable. Okay. And I'll get into that, how we're going to use that in a little bit. And what else do we have in here? Uh, he's got some heat shrink, clear heat shrink. Okay. A couple of pieces there. A uh, couple of, there's another smaller piece. DC probe with the one meg resistor in red and in black. Now this guy, I've never met this guy in person, but he thinks just like me because if I was going to build this on my own, I would have done the exact same thing. So in my mind, you know, DC is red and black, right? But your positive is red. So boom, boom, boom. Well, in AC, it's, you know, black and white and your, your hot, you know, not, not neutral is black. So in my mind, it makes perfect sense. DC, AC. I like this concept better than one with the switch because I feel like if I had one with the switch, I would pick up the probe and I'd just put it in the circuit and, uh, probably wouldn't be measuring what I should be measuring with it. Uh, I mean, you're going to have that resistor in there in series when it's in DC and not when it is in AC. So with this, I think it's just, I think it's better. Yeah, you're going to have two leads and a ground clip. Uh, so you're going to have three leads essentially, but I think this is much, at least in my mind, I like this setup better. So there's your, there's your AC pro or your DC probe and your AC probe stickers that we're going to put on there. So perfect. Okay. He's got another little piece of heat shrink here. Um, here's alligator clip for the, the ground clip. And here is your one meg resistor. Let's make sure this is one meg. Should be one meg. What do we have here? My eyes are really bad, so. Let me say it real slow and real loud. I'm blind. All right, so our resistor here looks like a 5% resistor. I don't know if I can focus in on this or not, but it looks like. Brown, black, black, yellow. It's a four band resistor, five band resistor. So one zero zero and then four zeros. Yep. So we got one mega ohm right there on that. Stick that right there. All right. So when you buy these, he sends you an email with a uh, link to a Dropbox. And then you can go to that Dropbox and there's instructions in there. So that was. I thought that was pretty cool. Let's get this camera up here out of the way. Uh, and he just basically gives you instructions on how to do this. But I mean, if you more than likely, you're going to know how to do it. Right. But if you don't, well, there's instructions. So basically you have this smaller uh, gauge cable here for your two probes and then you got this larger gauge cable here that is going to actually go for you know coupling these two together and well so this yeah, is going to be the, your probes and then this larger one right here is going to be for your 
your ground. Ground clip, yeah. So this should be shielded cable. Doesn't look like it. And this doesn't look like it. So the instructions said that we had shielded cable here, but it doesn't look like it doesn't look like they are. Instructions said that there was going to be shielded cable. Let's let's look at this real quick. See what it what it is. There's insulation off. Yeah, this is shielded. Okay. Now, for your probes, you're not going to use the shield. At least on the probe end, you can tie them together on the uh, on the plug end, but you're not going to use the shield on on the probe end. So we're going to strip this back a little bit further. The shielding on the probe leads are going to help against radio frequency interference for your measurements. I'm going to show you how to put together these probes and then I'll kind of fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me do it, but um, I'll show you how this goes together. You're probably going to need about an inch, I would say, of exposed conductor, center conductor. So we're probably going to strip this off just a little bit more. Okay. Get all these strands out of there. Get them cut off. You don't need this on the probe end. Okay, so you don't need any of this center conductor on the probe or this shielding braid on the on the probe side. Okay. And then we'll uh, take like about an inch off of here. Look at that. Perfect. Twist these together. The instructions say to tin this before you stick it in. Uh, I'm going to see if, if it works without tinning them. Uh, so the way it works is, so this one right here is going to be your AC. Okay, because I don't have the resistor in here. Here in a minute, we're going to put a resistor right here. And then the resistor is going to go in your DC probe. So this one right here is going to be the AC. So what it, what you do is you just, we may have to tin this. But we'll, we'll see what it does. It may splinter. We'll see. Okay, so at the end of this tip right here, you're going to want to take this little ring off. Okay. And then you see right here at the base of the threads, there's a little slot little hole right that's where this conductor is going to come out so let's try it if you twist the wire you'll kind of keep it yep we're probably going to need to tin it you see how it's all mushroom in there so we're going to tin this real quick already got my soldering iron warmed up. Get this tinned and then it won't splinter like that. So good call on the instructions right there. Um, absolutely right thing to do. So let's get this tinned real quick and we'll go from there. All right, let's dab on a little flux here. You don't want a lot on there. Just want it enough to where it's keeping those strands together. Okay, so let's see what you can see here. Not going to focus, is it? Let's see. Wow, that is not one to focus at all. All right, so I got it tinned, and while it's while it's left here on the stand, I guess I can just uh, try to feed the the probe through it. Well, it's not gonna work. Okay, here we go.
The instructions do say a little finesse is good. <laughs> but we'll see how it works out here. Should get that hit that channel. Hmm. Don't want to bend on me. There's a little channel in there that it should line up with, and as long as it lines up in there, then it will feed through it. Let's see. Try again. There it is. Look at that. Mango. Okay. Now, here's one thing. Uh, the instructions say to drill a, a, a hole, like a one eighth inch to a quarter inch hole right here in the end, so you can fill it with hot glue for some strain relief. Because you don't want this, you know, pulling out on the connection there. I'm actually just going to hot glue right around the, the end and then I'm going to actually um, heat shrink it uh, as well so that I think that'll hold it but that's a good idea with a little hole right there so when you when you build one of these you know for yourself maybe you don't get it from this kit so you don't get the instructions uh, a little hole right there um, but I encourage you to just buy the kit from this guy because it's going to save so much time and money and what I think I'm going to do before I snip this wire off I'm going to dab a little bit of a solder in there right there in that little hole to kind of secure that connection and that should work all right all right so that's good all right so um, I'm going to clip that off, clippy clippy, bingo, and then I'm going to put this cap back on it, woo, woo, remember this is the AC one, we didn't have the resistor on there, right, okay, stick this on there, and screw that down, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now, you don't have to solder that. You can just leave the lead sticking out there, and this cap will screw down on top of that lead and, and tighten it in, and then whatever's hanging out out here, just clip it off at that point, okay? But I wanted to get a good connection there, so I went ahead and dabbed a little bit of solder on there. And then I'll put some hot glue. I'll just put a dab of hot glue right there, and then we'll heat shrink that as well. So that's probe number one on one end. Let's go to probe number two. How are we going to tackle that well that's what this that's where this resistor comes in so and half of my magic hands is uh broke so i'm gonna have to do this kind of well let's see if i can get this back on there don't know why that happened but i think it uh i think it'll be enough to hold the resistor anyway we'll see so all he suggests in his instructions on this is to uh Oh, also make sure that you uh, take this piece that you just did for this probe and uh, go ahead and sit it out of the way so that you don't accidentally work on the other end of that when you're wanting to put this one together. You'll have a probe on each end, and that won't be good. So um, he suggests that you just tack this uh, resistor on the end of the cable and then just slide the resistor in the probe. So that's what I'm going to do. It sounds like a good idea to me. So we'll get this uh, cable stripped here. Again, we don't need the shielding. Just snip that shielding right off of there. Too easy. All right. And now in our next uh, installment, now that I've got these leads, it didn't take me long to get these leads, by the way. We just had some bad weather around here lately, and I just haven't had time to do any videos. Um, but it didn't take me long to get these leads. Maybe four or five days. I don't even know if it's that long. But um, anyway, we're going to tin this and tin the resistor. And 
join these together and we should be good to go um so it didn't take me very long to get them but um i just haven't got around to making part two of this video in the next video we're going to we're going to actually now that i've got the leads you have to have the leads in order to calibrate the thing you want to calibrate it with the leads that you're actually going to use and um you want to calibrate it with the one meg resistor in the in the DC um, probe and all that stuff, right? So, and you know, it's not going to matter if this thing's twisted around here. Well, I'll just go ahead and tin it first, and then. But we got to have the have the leads done before we can calibrate the unit. So, in the next installment, we're going to calibrate the unit. Let's get a good solder on this thing and um, so we'll calibrate it in the next episode next installment and then we're gonna do some uh, restoration on it because it does have some some parts that need replaced and then Either in the same episode or a different different episode, we're going to um, compare it to a DMM and also an analog, uh, regular analog electronic meter. So, all right. So before you put this through the uh, old ringer, we're going to put some heat shrink on that. And I think that one that he gave me here, I don't know what that's for exactly, but it's too big. I got some over here. So let's see what we got. I like white. <laughs> All right, okay, so I'm just going to use this white. And we'll just stick this uh, on there. Not that you really need it, but, you know, whatever. Stick that on there. Get that all covered up. I mean, it really doesn't matter if it's on there or not, but. So heat shrink only shrinks down to about half of its original size, right? So, anyway. And I'd do it. All right, let's fish it through the old uh, probe here. Remember, we're using the red one. Red one, red one. It's going to be our DC one. I, I could have put the labels on there uh, beforehand, but uh, I didn't. Anyway. We want to take our little ring off here. Sorry, that's my uh, rework station. It it runs a little bit even after you turn it off, so it cools down. Most of you guys are probably aware of that. All right, this is going to be a little tricky here because uh, that lead is stiff, that resistor lead. So... And if it doesn't line up exactly in that little channel, it's not going to feed out. So you saw how it was bent right there. Let's try it again. There it is. Boom! Look at that. So we're going to do this one exactly like we did the, um, the other one. I'm going to dab a little bit of solder in there. And then we'll trim it off and... Alrighty. I don't know what that is on my soldering iron tip, but it's bugging me. It's bugging me. Crazy. Whew. All right. I'm probably going to leave this uh, lead on there. Uh, let's see. Well, and then I'll put this ring on and then I'll trim it off. How's that? And it, make sure that it stays in there good 
probably going to double it back over itself or something like that. There you go. Just tighten that up. Really good. And we'll snip it right there. Snip it right there. Good to go. All right. Perfect. The resistors in series. Now we have our AC. I'm going to go ahead and stick the stickers on there. How do you, what do you think about that? Stick the stickers on there, huh? All right. Let's stick the stickers on there. Alrighty, we got the, this is the DC. I'm glad he color-coded these. The stickers that he have, that he has pictured in the instructions aren't color-coded. Uh, they're just, uh, both of them are on white background. And so, I guess probably, you know, somebody said, hey, why don't you make red and black stickers? And then that way, and I guess that's what he did. So we'll go ahead and stick this on here. DC probe. Now, if you did do the drill hole thing over there and fill it with uh, hot glue, you could actually stick this uh, probe uh, sticker over that and cover it up. And nobody would even know it. So, there you go. But I'm going to put the glue on the end. So, there's the DC probe. One mega ohm resistor. All right. And let's go ahead and put that AC probe sticker on there with the zero mega ohm resistor. Somebody's going to say, why'd you put a zero mega ohm resistor in your AC probe? I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Okay, here we go. This is the black one. This is AC ohms direct. And this, I mean, that could be a little bit confusing because uh, they say, oh, you're, that's DC, that's direct. No, it just means that it doesn't have a resistor in series with it, like the DC. And this is also used for your ohms, your uh, resistance readings as well. So there's your AC ohms probe direct. Not direct current, but just doesn't have a resistor in series. And um, I'll get my hot glue gun out here in a little bit and get it warmed up. And I'll put a little dab on there. And then what I'll do is before I finalize this end right here. Well, actually, I'm just going to slide it on there right now so I don't forget about it. I like doing things <clears throat> ahead of time so I don't forget about them. So I'm going to slide a piece of... Um, Well, it's got to be big enough to get around that anyway, so it really doesn't matter because I'm going to I'm gonna actually cover this up, but I'm probably going to put a smaller piece right there. So, yeah, let's do that. So, what I'll probably do, just for giggles, is I'll run this up through here and just have it on there, and then... When I get my hot glue on there, I'll I'll run this up here and I'll shrink this, and then I'll have a larger piece that comes over this end and encapsulates that whole thing. So I think that'll look nice. It'll be it'll be good. It'll be plenty of strain relief. It'll look nice. Everything will be hunky dory. So that's what I'm gonna do on that one. So I've already got that up there. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Out of the way. We're gonna come over here to our red one. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna run that heat shrink up there the same way and then we'll get this out of our way and we're going to work on our ground clamp here so we got this alligator clip that we're going to use for our ground clamp and uh, I don't know if he, I think that's what he probably included that for. I mean, yeah, it works. Whatever, I got plenty of it. Um, so let's do our ground clamp here. So 
we get our larger cable over here. We strip off a portion of it. So let's strip off a portion of it. And this is this is not shielded cable. Okay. So not shielded cable. So let's stick this in here. Probably could have tinned that first, but well, yeah, I'm gonna tin it first. How's that? I always think I can do this without tinning the wires, and you know what? I never have been able to. So I don't know why I don't just do it first. Yeah. Oh well, it's one of those things when you get used to doing something, even though you know better. You still do it. All right. You still do it, but you know better. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this just slightly. Okay. Because I want it to fall down in this little hole right here when I, when I get up to it. So I'm going to slide her in there. I'm going to jag her right there in the little hole. See? Feed her in there. Boom! See that? Okay, and then I'm going to draw her in a little more. Okay. And I'm going to go back. Okay. And I'm going to stick her back here. In this little thingamabobber. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Okay. You see how I did that? And then that's where I'm going to solder it right there. Okay. So that's how I do it. I mean, you, you can do it however you want to. But that's the way I do it. Okay. So here we go. Soldering again. All right. So we'll fill this little cavity right here with solder. It's going to take a little bit of heat. I might have to turn up my heat on this one. Oh, it's going. There we go. Now we're cooking with Wesson. There ain't nothing you're going to damage here. I mean, you might melt the insulation a little bit if you get it too hot, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, it's just taking a lot of heat. I may have to ramp it up. Ramp it up. Give it a little more heat. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Alrighty. Now, before I go any further on this end, I need to get that heat shrink on there, right? You know how many times I forgot to put heat shrink on cable? I'm getting better about it, though. I am getting better about it. Oh, so here we go. Slide this. Uh, this is a little warm, so I probably should have done this so, so quickly because uh, now... Kind of shrunk my heat shrink. Yeah. See how it already started shrinking my heat shrink? Yeah. Let that cool off a little bit. Yeah. See if I can get it on there fast enough before it starts. Ugh. Before it starts shrinking. Perfect. All right, let's do this. Tell you what, that that air gets hot, so it will burn you. Be careful if you're ever using one of these rework stations or a hot. I got a. I don't know if you can see it, but I got a hot air gun over there too. And there's my hot glue gun. But uh, I use the hot air gun for you know larger stuff. But when I'm doing little stuff like this. Let me go ahead. Well, I'll do the hot glue later. Yeah, we'll do the hot glue later. Before I do the calibration and all that stuff, I'll have them hot glued. You'll see it when I do the next video. So, now all that's left is we have to join all this stuff together 
onto this phone jack. Phone jack, quarter inch phone jack. You know, he said this thing was tested 2,000 volts. That doesn't. Hmm. It just seems like very little space there for 1,500 volts to be on that and that close to stuff there. But hey, we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna insulate it the best we can, and then that gap, you know, that don't look much different than a, a guitar cable or a speaker cable. This is a spe this is a speaker plug. Uh. For you know, this is designed for high current. The cable was designed for high current, but the voltage is very low, and it's got the same amount of. So I may have could I may have could have used something like this. I could have just scavenged this and probably used this just fine. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is a heavy duty. This is a heavy duty uh, plug right here, man. I'm telling you what, it's a heavy duty one. But, um, see, it's, it's, that thing's stout, okay? I probably could have used it. Anyway, I think I did the right thing, though. I did the right thing. I encourage you guys to use these kits. He's already got it all planned out. They work. He has customers all around the world. And, um, uh, I'm happy. So, I will tell you this right now. This is where you're going to mess up. <laughs> Okay, so alert, alert, alert. Here's what we're going to do. Now that we've got the probes and the clip all on this on these ends and we've we've slid our heat shrink over here. Like I said, I'm going to put a larger one uh, around the the probe and the wire itself once I get that hot glue in there. We really need to be careful right here, okay? Because um the next thing we're going to do is put the telephone jack, the quarter inch phone jack on the, on this end. And we're not going to have an opportunity to slide all of these things right here that we need to slide on here once we do that. So to prevent us from having to unsolder it and do it over again, which I've done many, many times. And I'm sure most of you guys who have put together instrument cables or something like that have made that mistake. What I like to do before, and this one's got a lot of pieces here that we're going to have to, I like to visualize how this is going to go on there first. So the way we're going to do it is, is these two smaller wires are going to be stripped and the center conductor on each one of them is going to be twisted together and it's going to go to the center pin, right? And the shielding on each one of them is going to go, to go over here to the, the ring, the shield of this jack. And then this one by itself is going to go to the shield as well to be twisted up with them. Okay. But what I want to have is a piece of heat shrink that goes over that center conductor up here to this center pin connection right here. So we're going to do that. So we need to visualize how this is all going to go back on there. So the first thing that we slide on here is going to be the last thing that we put on this. Okay. So the last thing that we do is we're going to screw this. Um, this thing on, that's the last thing we're going to do. So everything's got to be in there before this goes on. So that's going to be the first thing we put on here. We're just going to slide it back out of our way. Just get it out of our way. All right. And then the next thing is this spring or strain relief here. Right. And we need to make sure it goes the right way. You've got this side here that's, that's larger than this end. And that's going to have this piece right here catch into that so it needs to go on in this direction right here so let's slide that on and we're gonna we're gonna verify all this here in a minute but this needs to go on there and it's like gonna, it's not gonna slide very easy because you want it to be tight around these conductors so we're going to make a triangle out of this See how that's going to go like that, right? Okay. And then the next thing is going to be this sleeve here. That encapsulates all of them. So that's going to go on next. Okay. 
I have to slide this down a little more. And then this one, this heat shrink here is just going to go around these two right here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them. Uh, I'm going to have to get a little bit bigger. Yep, a little bit bigger. Let's see here. Let's see what I got here. Okay, yep. This ought to work. Okay. That's going to go right down in there. Okay. You'll see what we do with that here in a minute. So that's my big tip for you guys today. That's why I put the red alert on there because that's going to be a pain in the butt if you don't put all that stuff on there. See, it's going to be just like that. Everybody got that? All right. Okay. So now we need to strip these back. Now you can't go crazy with this. You don't have a lot of room in this, in this jack and you want there to be jacket left on these wires in order to clamp down on. Okay. You want this to clamp down on the wires. So we're going to do this in a very particular way. So I want you to watch carefully. We're going to take off about a half an inch or well, about three quarters of an inch, maybe of jacket. Okay. Three quarters of an inch to an inch of jacket. And we're going to do something a little bit different this time. We're not going to, we're not going to, uh, tend these wires yet. Okay. I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave the strand by itself here because we're going to twist those together here in a minute. And then you don't want a lot of, uh, center conductor exposed really okay right about that that much is maybe just a little bit more okay about like that okay about a little maybe maybe a little over a quarter of an inch okay so it's gonna look like that we're not gonna tin these quite yet let's do the next one want to strip it too far back because then you don't have enough insulation gap between your center conductor and your shielding so this is about right and if you look right here you don't have a lot of room okay and you want to be able to clamp so that's going to be about it right there okay so you kind of measure it out like that then we're going to do this center conductor or this ground conductor and you can get a little bit further with that one, I guess. Okay. Now, it would be very tempting to do these shields and stuff first. You don't want to. Don't do that first. Wait on that. We're going to do the, we're going to do the center conductors first. Okay. I'm going to twist these center conductors together. Now, Here's a disadvantage of having this type of uh, setup here, okay? Um, the disadvantage of having this type of setup is these two are connected together. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when I am using either probe and I put it into a circuit, the other the other probe is hot as well. Okay. It's got that voltage on it or uh, DC or AC, what, depending on which one you're using, it's got it on it as well. Whereas in the single probe situation that, you know, you see some of these, um, meters have where it's switchable, you don't have, you don't run into that issue with this. You, you do run the risk of having this energized. So we got to figure out something for that. Okay. I think I've got an idea on what we're going to do with that. Um, but for right now, you just need to know 
that one of these other probes is going to be hot when you're probing. So you're either going to have to holster this one somewhere or put a cover on it or something. So we'll, we'll look and see what we're going to do about that. All right, so let's get this in here and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is stick this center conductor right up through this hole, this tab. I'm going to get this tab out here just a little bit so I can work with it. I'm going to stick it all the way up there and I'm just going to bend this over so it doesn't so it doesn't come out, okay? And you see I have enough to, to clamp onto my insulation back here, okay? So we're going to tack that with some solder right now, all right? Put a little flux on there. A lot of people... Flux is good for a lot of different things. A lot of people think it's just for heat transfer. And it is. I mean, yeah, it helps with heat transfer. But it's also good for cleaning. It takes all the oxidation off the two pieces that you're joining together. And it just helps with that that solder bond between the the uh, pieces that you're trying to solder together so it does a lot of things okay all right that's good got that now I'll show you what we're gonna do with the shield let me clip this little piece off right here if you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to get a little closer. All right. For our shield, we're going to twist all these together, first and foremost. I need a little slack out of this one. Okay. Maybe I got too much. No. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna twist these together. What? What are you thinking? Now, there's a little trick to these quarter inch foam jacks that a lot of people don't realize. Okay. Get this shield around here. And I'm gonna show you what the little trick is. Okay. Now, get all those twisted up right there. Okay, the little trick on this is this. You see this little tab right here? Right there? Use my handy dandy probe here little tab right there that can clamp down onto this okay so I'll show you I'm gonna lay this down in here see that I'm gonna clip some of that off but uh, grab your little needle nose pliers right here and this will hold it right in place for you a lot of people don't know what that tab is for really what? What are you thinking? Boom. That's what it's for. And that will uh, also allow us to it, grip the solder better because it's got that little hole in there. And then, so once I get that, I'll slide these up and we'll clamp onto the jacket. Okay, we're going to put a little solder right there. Now see, I don't I need to make sure that that stuff don't touch, right? So that's what this is for. Oh, and see I messed up. What? What are you thinking? You guys saw that right on camera. I'm just going to leave this in here. So I've got to re I've got to resolder this because I, I I went too fast and um 
Well, this is what happens when you go too fast. So, and now I bet I bet I can't get that tab up. Oh man, this is what happens when you go too fast. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason I put this on there was to to slide this up, and I should have done it before I put the shield on there. That was the whole that was the whole reason for me putting this on here, right? But now what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to go in here with some tape and separate this. Okay. Because I got this soldered really good and I got that tab down there squinched on there. And I don't want... I need to clean this up a little bit. So... You see what I'm talking about? Even good, even when you plan well, sometimes your plan can leave you, leave you, leave you wanting, I guess you could say. So I got to get something to insulate that, see? Hmm. All right, so we'll get some tape here. we're going to do uh here in a little bit is uh do a continuity test on this to make sure we didn't get any actually i can do it right now probably want to do it i probably want to do it right now while it's up here okay so what we're going to do we're going to do a continuity test and uh, then we'll get this uh jack put together and then we'll after we get it all assembled we're going to do another continuity test so and to get my little multimeter here. Let's get this put together and we'll do another continuity check. We'll clip this little thing right here. the sleeve make sure you get the sleeve on there sleeve it sleeve it and leave it and then we're going to slide this spring up as far as we can all right 
right. And now the last but not least piece is right there. And then the instructions say to put this heat shrink around here. We may do that. Like right there, right? But let's check continuity again. Stick it up here and check continuity on this thing. Make sure we're good. So... Got our meter here again, continuity. Um, I'm gonna clip this one on. Shouldn't have anything here. Nothing here. Nothing there. But there. All right, and then we should have our uh, one mega ohm between here. All right. Yep. All right, so no opens, no shorts. Stick that on there real quick. All right, so there's that. And that was easy. Get this hot glue gun warming up. And let me clean up my desk here a little bit. So we got that done. So now we have both of our probes completed and our ground clip and we're ready to calibrate the voltmeter. That's going to be in our next episode so make sure you tune in for that one and um I highly recommend these. Like I said, I'll put the link in the description below. For fifteen dollars, I mean, you could you could probably dig in your stash and find something that'll work in this application, and you could probably build your own. Fairly easy, but um, I would I would consider doing this before you did it because everything's just here laid out for you. The guy's really easy to work with. I would check out his site. He's got a lot of other things on there besides these kits. He's got all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Put some comments down below. I'd love to hear your comments. Um, I know that you guys are going to rag me about the, the little mistake that I made on the jack, but I just left that in there because, you know, I could have edited it out, but, you know, it's fine. I do things like that all the time. And uh, you have to go back, fix it, and it makes things harder. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, like, subscribe, put some comments down below. And uh, st stay tuned for next episode.